hopefully this is working. Can you guys see me? Is it working? It's always nerve wracking when you first go live to like make sure it's actually working, you know? Well, this is some time for you guys to just like chit chat with me. I'm excited. I have, it's been a while since I've done a, a live stream on YouTube, so I'm excited to be here. Okay, looks like we've got a few people. So if you guys have any questions about chameleons, like now's your time, like lay it on me. We'll just like rapid fire, go through a bunch of questions. Otherwise, I wrote down some like common questions that people ask me and we're gonna chat through those, but really like I wanna give priority and first dibs to anyone who's watching live so then you guys can ask me all of your questions. Let's see, oh, hey, hey Lex, what's up? Who else do we have? Apple do. 2005, hello, hello. Excited for you guys to be here. We've got Matthew, what's up? What country are you guys from? You don't have to tell me like states or cities, but just like what general region, like what time zone. I try to pick a good time for everyone that could join in. And we've got No Not Kenzie, Sam's Exotics, Joe, hello from Sweden, what's up? USA, represent. I've never been to Sweden, but I would love to at some point. Seems like a cool, cool spot. USA, USA. That's awesome. Hey, Robert. Yeah, it looks like we have people, a lot of people. Carly the Chameleon. Okay, that's an adorable name. Oh, yeah. Who, who watching has a chameleon? What's your chameleon's name? What kind of chameleon? Like, give me the scoop. Do you guys have questions about your chameleon? Happy to answer them. Ryan says, what's up? What's up, Ryan? How's it going? Hope you're having a peachy day. Oh, first question of the day. What inspired you to name your chameleon Neptune? So yeah, Neptune was my first reptile. I kind of named everyone else after like a theme of, you know, outer space and stuff. I had a list of names. I think like Pixel was on there at one point, Pongo. I'm a big fan of 101 Dalmatians. Um, yeah, I landed on Neptune. It was just a name that popped into my head and I had a list of names and then I stuck with it. And then after Neptune, I got Pluto. And then after Pluto, I got Apollo and Luna. And so now I kind of have this like celestial outer space, outer space theme. Do you have to feed your chameleon doobie roaches? No, a lot of places actually have doobie roaches are illegal. Um, but if you're not gonna feed your chameleon roaches, then you should use another high protein bug like crickets. Some people are like, oh, crickets are annoying and roaches scare me. I'm like, eh. Kind of hard to feed a chameleon if you're not using the other. Okay, Faith has a female Yemen. That's awesome. Kaden's asking, where can I order chameleons from? Depends what kind of chameleon. I know a lot of panther breeders, um, some veiled breeders, so just let me know like what kind of chameleon you're interested in. And if anyone who's watching, if you have suggestions, if you bought from a good breeder, like drop them down below. Kiki Pan Panny. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I don't know how to say your name. Um, but welcome, I know, I think you were the person who was really eager for me to do a live stream, so happy you could join. Um, Joe's got a veiled in panther, one of each, I dig it. John says he's about to get one, what kind? You're thinking, John, are you team veiled, team panther, team completely different other species? Let me know. Sacramento, represent. Uh, Carter's got a baby chameleon, any tips? Yes, leave them alone, give them time to settle in, make sure their bugs are small enough. Um, make sure they have lots of hiding places. Those are all important things. Um, let's see, Izzy, that's a cute name. Robert's getting everything set up, that's great. That's like pro tip, like number one thing you can do when getting a command is get their enclosure set up beforehand so then you can make sure their temperatures are correct, humidity is correct, you can get feedback. Um, you can always ask me, I can try to help. Um, but get feedback and make sure that your enclosure is set up properly and then get the chameleon versus getting the chameleon and then having to scramble like ah, you know, and trying to figure out everything for your chameleon. So that's definitely like pro tip right there. His name's Poncho. He just got rid of his old skin. Poncho, that's cute. Kind of like Pongo. Do you guys watch Disney movies? 101 Dalmatians, anyone? Um, let's see, what kind of plant light do you suggest? I have the 24, 24, 48. I like the Jungle Dawn made by Arcadia, the Jungle Dawn LED bar. You can't see it, but if you look at my other videos where I'm like higher up, then you can see the Jungle Dawn. And I talked about it a little bit in my last video when I did like an, a tour of Luna's enclosure. I've seen immense growth. Like my plants are skyrocketing with that LED bar. There's a bunch 
of other plant lights. I know some people use 6500 like daylight bulbs. Um, people have had success with those. Some people use just like plant spotlights and that works too. But yeah, it, it can be tricky trying to get your plants to grow inside your enclosure. Got to give them enough water, put them in the correct spot in the enclosure so that they'll thrive, plant lights, all that. Good recommendations. Thank you for the videos and info. You are so welcome, Ryan. Thank you for the nice comment. How long will it take for a veal to come in to get fully grown? Typically, like about a year old is when they'll stop, stop growing. But around nine months is kind of when their growth slows down and then they kind of just fill out. Like you, they typically don't get any longer. They just kind of get a little thicker and fill out that way. But usually about a year, which is why a question people always ask me, and hope maybe someone's wondering this, is how you can tell how old your chameleon is without getting like a hatch date from a breeder. So the best thing you can do is compare pictures of your chameleon to other like chameleons that people do know the age and the hatch date. The reason I bring this up is because once they hit one year old, once they're considered an adult, a one year old chameleon looks the exact same as a three year old chameleon as a five year old chameleon. So once they hit that adulthood, it's really hard to gauge their age because we gauge their age based off their size and coloring. So. That's something to consider, and I know people ask me that all the time. Let's see. Kiki Panya. Did I say that right? Kiki Panya? Did I say your name right? Okay. Um, I have a female Jackson. She needs a boyfriend. Recommendations where to get the male. Why does she need a boyfriend? Like, are you trying to breed? Like, that's one thing. But chameleons are solitary animals, and they do best when kept by themselves. Breeding Jacksons in particular is tricky because they give live birth and they also retain sperm. So I just want to make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. And some people think that their chameleon needs a buddy or a partner or whatever, when in actuality they do best by themselves. So I'm going to caution you. I'm not sure. I need more context. Um, do Jackson chameleon horns ever get in the way or do they make care and feeding difficult? I don't think so. I mean, oops, sorry. Um, Apollo has like little, little horns on the top of his nose. Um, sometimes it's funny, he'll be climbing and he'll like try and get in between branches or vines and he'll like bump his little nose and like, oh, you know, like, excuse me, can't get through. Um, but generally speaking, I don't think that would be problematic. It's a evolutionary, right? Something they've developed with time and if it was a problem, then they wouldn't, wouldn't have them, you know? I'm going to get availed soon, hopefully. Awesome, congrats. What's your name? No, not Kenzie. That's exciting. Set your enclosure up beforehand. Check out my care videos. Okay, Tim says, I got a six month old veiled Earl. That's adorable. He's so friendly and social compared to all the talk. Earl has an option to exit his enclosure and socialize or not. So Tim, I'm, that's great news. I'm so excited to hear that Earl is like very adventurous. I'm just gonna caution you. If your chameleon spends most of its time outside of its enclosure, then you may want to provide UVB or heat source outside their enclosure. Because if inside their enclosure, it's the perfect humidity, heat, and UVB, like that's the perfect environment for them. But if they're hanging out outside their enclosure, then they're no longer in that ideal environment and being able to absorb their UVB. A common misconception is UVB does not penetrate through windows. So even if they're chilling by the window, they're still not getting their UVB exposure. So I try to limit my chameleons spending time outside their enclosure to like one to two hours, one to two times a week, max. And they would spend more time outside their enclosure if they wanted, like if they could, but I try to limit it so then they have time in their correct environments and UVB. Just my thoughts. Okay. You know how, you know Kung Fu Kenny's name? Yeah, I know Kung Fu Kenny. Oh, is that, Lex, is that your account? Am I, am I connecting the dots? Sometimes people have different usernames on different platforms. So like I might DM you on Instagram, but then your YouTube name's different. So then you make a comment. I don't know it's the same person. So if Lex is Kung Fu Kenny, then I, I know who you are. And I hope your chameleon is shedding just fine. Okay, we're moving on. Can the crested gecko be with another one in the same cage? I would not recommend housing any reptiles together, just as a general rule of thumb. I keep mine by myself, he's chill. I love Disney, shout out to Disney. We were talking about that earlier. Um, I was just gonna recommend that Jungle Dawn all the way. Yep, another plus one for the Jungle Dawn. They're pricey, I'm not gonna deny that. They're expensive. I asked Santa for one, <laughs> I got one for Christmas. But they're amazing, amazing investment. Um, HHJJ, hello, nice of you to join. Um, okay, thanks for providing great info. You are so welcome, Laura. 
Are queen ferns safe for commands? Generally, ferns are safe for commands. I don't know of any ferns that aren't safe for chameleons. I think ferns are good. I think they're hard to grow, honestly, in a chameleon enclosure, but try it, see what happens. I have a huge question. When is the best time to upgrade your chameleon cage? Um, ASAP. Like, people try to do this whole, ah, this is, this is my opinion, all right? My two cents, take it or leave it. People will try to put their baby commands in these small enclosures, and the idea is that so they're able to find their food, which I think is a bunch of baloney, because if you think about it, panther commands are in the rainforest of Madagascar, right? They have a whole, how are they not finding their food in Madagascar? It's not like they have a food cup in, Ma in Madagascar, so I think it's complete bogus of having baby enclosures and then upgrading to a larger enclosure. Also, people tend to wait too long. Like, chameleons grow very, very quickly, and a six-month-old will very quickly outgrow the chameleon kit, so I would, like, upgrade them ASAP. The other thing people say is, like, oh, I don't want to, like, cause stress to my chameleon. Well, by the time they get settled into their new home, you're just going to bump them into the new one anyways, so I just, I say do it right away. Go for it. Neptune was in his 24, 24, 48 since the very first day I brought him home, so I say go for it. When do chameleon colors fully come in? Okay, so this varies chameleon to chameleon. The general rule of thumb is about 12 months. Neptune didn't get his until he was about a year and a half. Found it like he was a late bloomer, but so anyone from there, year, year and a half, give or take. Okay, the humidity in my house is 10%. Is PVC enclosure okay to use, even though airflow is restricted? So make sure it's a vertical enclosure and make sure the top is screened and that you have some sort of like screen front because what you want is airflow to circulate through the top to the bottom you wouldn't want just like a solid enclosure um, and if you have a screen top then that allows for your heat and uvb to penetrate into the enclosure so that's what i would recommend mm -mm -mm. i want a panther but leaning towards jackson's i like the horn i see rainbow jackson i want to get just be careful a lot of jackson's chameleons are wild caught which have issues, not all, but it, it's pretty common. Um, so they may or may not have parasites. So if you do decide to get a Jackson's, I will caution you and suggest that you go to a vet and get a fecal test done to make sure that's all good to go. If you get a female Jackson's chameleon, I would work under the assumption that they are pregnant. Females do retain sperm. So if there was any chance at all that she was maybe possibly ever in contact with the male, odds are she has sperm in her and odds are she will give live birth at some point, just warning you. I just got a baby panther chameleon. He has not ate since I got him three days ago. What should I do? Okay, Isaac, just take a deep breath with me. <sighs> it's okay, this is very, very common. And in fact, I made a whole video on what to expect when you bring a new chameleon home. The number one thing that people freak out over is that they're not eating. Give them time to settle in. Give them lots of hiding places, lots of wet plants and branches, and make sure you give them privacy when you're offering them food. Commands are naturally just shy eaters, so what I would recommend is using a cup, putting your bugs in there once they're gut loaded and supplemented, and then leave the room. Do not even look at them. Like, don't, like, and you'll know if they ate because they're in that cup, right? So that's how you can track if they're eating food. Give them a couple of days, keep offering them food. Like, don't freak out unless it's been over like two weeks then there may be other underlying issues, but that's my recommendation and just take a deep breath. Give them time, do your best not to watch them. Okay, how old does a panther chameleon need to be to feed them hornworms? My recommendation is about six months old. Reason for this is the hornworms just get gigantic. If you can get your hands on some tiny ones, then like chameleons younger than that can eat them, but the hornworms grow so, so, so quickly. And so general rule of thumb is you want bugs that are not wider than the width between their eyes. And hornworms can be long, but they get thick. So you're worried about the thickness of the bug, not the length of the bug. So I would recommend like six months. Okie dokie. More questions, more questions. Is there such thing as a beginner chameleon? Uncharted Wild, nice of you to join. How are you doing? Um, there is sort of, I've made a video about this and my recommendation is a male Panther chameleon or a male a veiled chameleon three months or older. Chameleons can be challenging. The hardest part is getting them set up correctly, but the reason why I recommend males is because they don't lay eggs. And the reason why I recommend a panther and a veiled is because there's lots of reputable breeders and there's a lot of care information about it. So you can follow someone's recommendations and 
ultimately end up with a healthy chameleon. If you try to get a wild caught chameleon or if you try to get an uncommon species, not only are the odds of your chameleon being sick much, much higher, but then there's not a lot of people out there who have experience that can help mentor you and guide you on how to take care of, take care of them. So that's my recommendation. Okay, Robert's got a question about humidity. He's got a Dragonstone hybrid, life plants, and actually struggling to get the humidity down now. I'm misting for one to two minutes and only most at night. Okay. <laughs> this is why you have to take your environment into consideration. You may want to consider getting a dehumidifier if your humidity is too high. Yeah, that's probably my biggest recommendation. It also depends how you have the bottom. If there's like, if it's bioactive or there's lots of water inside the enclosure, that would be my recommendation. Wondering where you got Neptune from? I got Neptune from my local reptile stop, stop, shop, local reptile shop. Okay, HHJ says, hello, my sister sprayed water in my community's eye, it swelled up a little. I think she's okay, she started to open it and ate yesterday with the spray bottle, face palm emoji. Yeah, try not to spray your chameleon directly. It sounds like your chameleon's fine, but I usually try to spray around them, not like at them. Whoa, what? Who who put in $9.99? That's so sweet. Who is it, Courtney? Oh, hey, Courtney. I've been seeing your, your comments. Hope things are going well. You have what, uh, uh, Jackson's, I think? Is that what you have? Yeah, well, congrats on your new chameleon. Hopefully the changes are going well. What'd you say? Best cam channel ever. I appreciate your advice as I navigate through the chameleon world. I wouldn't trade Gladys for anything. I'm so happy to be a cami mommy. Oh, I'm so excited. I know like chameleons can be challenging and I know you're learning a lot right now, but like keep it up. You're doing great. The fact that you're watching my videos and you're asking questions, like that's a game changer. And I know a lot of new keepers feel bad that they're making mistakes along the way, but I always say, hey, I'm more than happy to help you as long as you're willing to learn and make changes and your chameleon will be thankful for it. You'll feel more confident as a keeper. It just, it takes time. You know, we all make mistakes. We're all learning. Chameleons are not easy animals. And unfortunately there's a lot of incorrect information out there. So the best thing you can do is get your hands on some good information like this YouTube channel. And then, you know, just make changes like, and it'll happen with time. Don't worry about it. Okay. Other questions. Um, do I have to wash my hands after or before touching my chameleon? I would say probably a good idea, especially if you have multiple species or multiple animals. There's no harm. Like definitely a good best practice is to like wash your hands in between. Um, okay. Mm, the care sheet I said says daytime humidity should be 50 to 60%, but it hovers around 70 to 90% near the top. Okay guys, exciting news. The video that I'm working how to water your chameleon and it's like a lot of <laughs> a lot of footage it's gonna be a long video but I talk about humidity levels how to hydrate your chameleon fogging misting drippers like how to get higher humidity lower humidity how to tell if they're hydrated like I try to anticipate all your questions when it comes to humidity these are the general recommendations as of right now subject to change a panther chameleon is going to be 50 to 60 percent during the day a veiled chameleon 30 to 40 percent during the day Jackson's chameleon 30 to 50% during the day and at nighttime, 70% or higher. That's the recommendation right now. The cool thing about the chameleon hobby is we're constantly learning and changing. As of today, that's the general recommendation that most keepers are following to simulate what they experience in the wild. Hopefully that helps you guys. And it doesn't have to be an exact percentage, right? If it's 29% or 31%, like that's okay. These are just general ranges to help you guys out. Okay. Um, we have a baby girl, Millie. Oh, that's a cute name. Snaps for you. Okay. She is my world and my entire reason for creating a YouTube channel. I love your advice and channel. Thank you. You are so welcome. Like that is such a sweet comment. Like you just made my day. Um, tip number one, don't listen to pet store employees. I don't want to write off all pet store employees because I have had a few like pet store, pets, what is it? Pet smart Petco. There we go. Comment on my videos and like they're learning and trying and like I'll go into PetSmart and Petco and I'll spend like an hour or two. Any employee in there who's willing to listen to me ramble on and on about chameleon care, I am more than happy. My biggest thing is like, I'm like, hey, did you know that you can sex fail chameleons as their babies? And they're like, what? No, you can't do that. I'm like, actually you can. Like, would you like to learn? 
And they're like, wow, really cool. And so then I teach them how you can sex a baby, like feel chameleon, because a big mistake a lot of people make, and I'm, I'm sure one of you is watching, like this has happened to you. You buy a chameleon, they tell you it's a male, turns out it's female, and now she has eggs, and you're like, what the heck, how do I deal with this? So if we can educate our pet store employees and then educate new keepers, then hopefully we can help mitigate the number of keepers who are having egg-bound like female chameleons. That's the dream anyways. That's my two cents. I just try to help people and like, I think that's an easy thing to try and teach someone. Okay, where'd you get your UVB light? Um, let's see, where did I get it? Um, I know there's a couple, I know people get them off Amazon. Where is this? Oh, this is it. Reptile Basics Inc. That's where I got my UVB bowl from. It's an Arcadia T5, 6%, 36 inch. Um, I can't remember the name of the fixture. But yeah, that's the bulb that I have. I bought the fixture a long, long time ago. Okay, let's see. I have seen you rate your viewers in closure. When will you do that again? And if you do, where can we send the pictures to be reviewed? If you guys are interested, so I've done a part one and part two of rate my viewers like enclosures. If that's something you guys are interested in, like let me know down in the comments. If I decide to do that in the future, which I think I will, then I will post on YouTube, Instagram, wherever. Um, like, hey, submissions are open, and typically I just have people send them to me um, through a link. Um, it's just, I, there's a lot, and I want to make sure I get to everyone, and it's near impossible to try to get to everyone, so I try to pick, like, oh, I had this idea, sorry, I'm all over the place, of maybe, like, really good enclosures that are, like, examples of, like, here's something to strive for that can maybe be inspiration, and then I was thinking maybe I can do enclosures that have room for improvement, right, ones that have common mistakes, I see new keepers make so then people can learn from their mistakes. Maybe do two, like one, like really, really good ones and really, really bad ones, like in a, in a nice way, you know? Um, that's, that's maybe something I could do. Um, let's see. Oh, we got 40 people. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Okay. Um, if you get a panther and they're juvenile, do they eat till they're full or should there be a limit? If your chameleon is like, six months or younger, feed them as much as they want, really. They're growing like crazy. Well, if you have a female chameleon, then I would start to back off her food once she reached like seven or eight months old to try and help her not lay as many eggs. And for a male chameleon, like probably around nine months is a good time to start cutting back on food. But until then, let them go crazy. Um, okay, my chameleon has never hissed or bit, but he eats and drinks. I can pick him up without him getting mad. Is that normal? So some chameleons are super chill and don't have a big fear response. Apollo and Luna, the chillest chameleons you could never meet. I have friends come over, they hold them no problem. Neptune is a big scaredy cat. He gets super defensive, he'll like hide behind a branch and he's not, like he's not mean by any means, but he's very scared and is very scared of me. So I only have him come out when he wants to and when it's his choice. So you've got different kinds of chameleons with different personalities, but you know, I just respect his space and he respects me and like he likes to chill in his enclosure. That's fine. If he wants to come out on his tree, that's cool too. It's a mutual level of respect. Um, how do you raise the humidity at night? Most keepers use a fogger. Um, that's probably the most common one. Or you can do a misting session right after lights turn off and that can give you a spike in humidity. Those are probably the two easiest options. Um, can I mix a red-eyed tree frog with a veiled chameleon. I would not recommend mixing any sort of reptile with your chameleon. There's a chance that your chameleon could eat the frog. Not gonna lie, I've seen chameleons take down some crazy, crazy animals. I saw a video of a chameleon eating a bird. Like someone was just free-ranging their chameleon outside and whoosh, took down a bird. That was pretty crazy. Um, people will, like chameleons will eat like little lizards, all kinds of stuff. I wouldn't risk it. If you like your frog, leave them be. Plus, I have to imagine there's different care requirements for a frog versus a chameleon, right? Don't frogs have super high humidity requirements? I don't know, I'm not, I'm not into amphibian care. What life plants do you recommend for veiled chameleons? I'm going to recommend a pothos plant. I don't know if you can see my enclosure, this like a vining one that's happening here. That's like my number one. You can get it at Home Depot, you can get it at Lowe's, especially with the weather getting warmer, like now is prime plant buying season. I'm so excited. I have a bunch of empty pots. So I'm just waiting, waiting to go hit Home Depot and just like whoosh, take all their plants. But pothos is probably my favorite. It does really well towards the top of the enclosure by the lights. 
Um, and then all the vines can kind of like go down. That's my favorite and personal recommendation for you guys. Mm -mm -mm. I got two three month old panther camellias. One has always been at least two times bigger than the other. Should I be worried about the smaller one or is this normal? Okay, Laura, I don't know if it was you or someone else, but someone told me they had two chameleons and one was smaller, one was bigger. Maybe you, maybe not. But then the person told me that they kept them in the same enclosure. If you have two chameleons, they need to be in two separate enclosures and they need a visual barrier so they can't see each other. If you keep them in the same enclosure, then you're gonna experience exactly this. Oh, Neptune's climbing around. You're gonna experience this where one is going to become dominant over the other one. So I would definitely make sure they're separate. I don't know, give me some more information. I can help you out. I bought the crappy chameleon kit. I upgraded everything except the cage. How long can I have my three month chameleon in that enclosure? So I am going to recommend that you bump them to a larger enclosure. Biggest reason is one, they can handle it. But more importantly too, is if you get a T5, 5.0 or 6% UVB on top of a 30 inch enclosure, which is what um, the chameleon kit usually is, that's gonna be a lot of UVB exposure for your chameleon. That bulb is recommended for a 48 inch tall enclosure. So you can see that's gonna be much bigger gradient than if you have 30 inches, it's gonna be much more concentrated. So either raise your T5 up, um, so you have that 48, 48 inch difference, or just upgrade them to the 48 inch enclosure. I know you wanna use the cage because you like put money into it, but really I would just upgrade them sooner than later. Okay, I got my second chameleon three days ago, a three month Ambilobi from Fram's Cans. Sire, Gary, and Wilma. Woo! Snaps for new chameleon for a panther ambilobi. That's what Neptune is, for anyone wondering. He's an ambilobi panther chameleon. Um, Fram's cams, highly recommend them as a breeder. I've been working with them um, behind the scenes on some videos. So definitely um, recommend them. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Can we discuss proper UVB distance? So I kind of touched on this a little bit. Um, Feel like the reputation is certain T5 bulbs for certain species, but shouldn't it be distance between line and basking? I know you have a vid, but it'd be great to discuss. Yes, so like I said, we're on T5 high output linear UVB in a single hood fixture. And then you want that to be 48 inches, like a 48 inch tall enclosure. Then you would have your basking branch that will give you around 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit, depending if you have a male or a female. And then below that, probably closer to eight to 10 inches is where you would have an additional branch. And this is where you would get the correct UVB exposure. Um, typically you want a UVI or UV index range of 3.0. And that's gonna be the different Ferguson zones. And I know I sound like I'm getting super sciencey on you guys, but that's the correct level of UVB exposure that the chameleon would get in the sun. So that's what we're trying to replicate inside their enclosure. So you don't wanna just stick a T5 on a teeny tiny enclosure and you can't just stick a 12% on a 40 inch enclosure. It's all about that UVI number and getting the correct ranges. The only way you would really know that is if you had a solar meter. So if you don't have a solar meter, then you need to try and replicate someone else's environment that does have that solar meter, which is why I make these recommendations. Woo! There's Neptune, can you guys see him? Is he in the shot? What's up Neptune? Oh, sorry. Now he's grumpy. Well, really, he's scared. A lot of people say chameleons get angry or they're grumpy or mean. They're not mean, they're not grumpy, they're not angry. They're scared and this is their only defense mechanism is to make themselves look intimidating. So I think we gotta work as a hobby on kind of changing the language that we use. Okay, let's see. Are cordolin plants good for chameleons? I don't know what those look like. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't answer that one. Can I email you helpful tips on running a successful channel about veils? Not to compete with you, I just wanna get above, oh, advice from an expert. Um, the best way to contact me is through Instagram DMs. Honestly, I don't ever check my email. So sorry <laughs> if anyone's tried to email me. Follow me at Neptune the Chameleon on Instagram. Shoot me a DM, that's the best way to get hold of me. Um, you can also send pictures on Instagram so I can review enclosures and what your chameleon looks like, which is much easier than YouTube where you can't um, send pictures or videos. Have you let, ever let your chameleons play with each other? Uh, no, because then I would end up with baby chameleons or chameleons that are very stressed out. Chameleons are solitary animals. So when I take one chameleon out, the other two stay inside their enclosure and out of sight of the chameleon that is out. So 
No, they don't play with each other. What's up, Misty? He's just climbing around. Um, can you tell male or female and baby panther chameleons? It's very hard, um, not impossible, but panthers are really hard to sex out of the egg. Um, there are ways you can do it. It's at the base of the tail. You're looking for a hemipenal bulge. Um, but you really have to have a trained eye, and even then, people still get it wrong. I spent months and months and months <laughs> looking at baby panther chameleons because I knew when I went to go pick out Neptune, I wanted to feel confident I was getting the male, even if like the person who was working told me it was a male. Like I wanted to know it was a male, so then they didn't actually get me a female. So I've learned with time on how to sex baby panthers, but it's an art, not a science. It's, it's very tricky to do. Um, what are better, black soldier fly or dubias? Um, those are both great feeders. If I had to pick one, probably dubia roaches because they're higher on protein and they're more substantial than black soldier fly larvae. Um, but I feed my chameleons both. Not only the larvae, but the flies and dubias. The more variety, the better. I have a dual light fixture now. I realize I can't use it for UVB, but can I use it for the basketball? Olivia, yes, you absolutely can. If you guys bought the chameleon kit and have the dual fixture that has the two bulbs, the heat bulb should be great and should be able to give you the correct temperatures. The UVB bulb needs to be replaced as soon as possible with the T5 high output linear UVB. What you can do instead is you can actually put a plant light in that second spot. So then you can have a light for your plants, your heat, and your UVB. That's like a happy compromise. But at the very least, you can just use it for heat and that would be fine too. It took me just like you five months for my guy to come onto my hand all by himself. Just happened last week. Oh, congratulations. That's so exciting. It took a lot of small, short sessions and patience. Yes. People are super eager. They get a new chameleon and they want to handle it that next day. They see pictures on Instagram. So I hit, was, it, Neptune came out of his enclosure yesterday and he crawled out on his own, like onto his tree. And then once he was out, then he typically doesn't have any issues with me for whatever reason. But when he's in enclosure, he's like super scared. That was the first time I held him in over a month. Like I know it's very easy to interpret Instagram and social media as people like handle their chameleons all the time. When he came out of his enclosure yesterday, I took like 500 pictures. Maybe not 500, but like closer to 50. So then I will post those on Instagram until like another month goes by. Then he finally comes out again. So don't give in to like the social media highlight reel of people being able to easily handle their chameleons. Like Neptune is a big scaredy cat. And um, like she was just mentioning, it took him five months before he was able to come out on his own. So that took a lot of time and a lot of treats to make that happen. Um, can my chameleon eat lettuce? No. What do you recommend for a chameleon that is only eating superworms? Stop feeding them superworms. If all the, what are you doing, dude? You're making too much ruckus. Stop feeding them superworms and only offer them other bugs. That would be my recommendation. What is it? Oh, Carter Man, sixty five man. Oh, thank you so much for the the donation. That's super super thoughtful. I super appreciate it. Um, People always ask me how you can support the channel and like some people try to Venmo me money or send me money like I'm, I'm not after your money like I do this because I genuinely want to any money that I, I make from the YouTube channel or from you guys send to me like goes directly back to the chameleons and helps me like support those guys and to help create content for new keepers like you but really I just do this because I, I love it um, so I just want to say thank you to you guys for the kind words and support for me, like making all this content for you guys, like I genuinely love this and super appreciate all the support. Um, okay, other other questions. Sorry, I didn't mean to get all, all sappy on you guys, but like I, I really mean it. Like this is like brings me so much joy to help you guys out. And for people to like share in my chameleon weirdness and my chameleon hobby, right? Like that that's so cool. So so cool. Um Ian, is that how you say your name? Ian Hamilton? I don't know how to say your first name. I think that's right. Hi from cold, miserable Scotland. Hello. Thanks for always commenting on my videos. I appreciate it. How do you clean a chameleon enclosure? I made a video about this, um, but I just spot clean my enclosures. So I don't, it's just as simple as taking a paper towel and like cleaning up any poop, pieces of shed, dead leaves, anything like that. I clean up and that's it. Chameleons are very, very easy to take care of that way. Um, a lot of people try to deep clean and like take everything out, but that's actually very stressful for your chameleon to try and take everything out and rearrange their home. So just clean as needed, just spot clean. If you see poop, pick it up, like pieces of shed, pick it up, no biggie. 
how old is my command when they first shed? Depends how old they are when you get them. If they're a baby, it's typically, you know, once a month, every couple months, a um, couple weeks. And then as they get older, it takes longer and longer for them to shed again. Neptune just recently shed. I think the last time he shed was like six months ago, if memory serves. Um, and he's an adult, so he takes much longer to shed. Um, Guinness Fletcher, what's up? Nice to see you. Hopefully your new chameleon is doing well. Hopefully they're settling in. Um, let's see. What age can a panther start eating super worms? From a baby. You can get panthers, or not panthers, supers, um, teeny, teeny, tiny. If you get like the extra small super worms, then they can eat them. Just make sure the worms aren't wider than the width between their eyes and that they're, they're too big. Um, <laughs> excuse me, man, there's a small dinosaur behind you. Yeah, Neptune's climbing around. He's doing his thing. Where's Luna? Luna's like in the middle. I don't know if you can see her head. Maybe you can see her head. Um, are adult dubious too big for a chameleon? It depends how big your chameleon is. Like, um, my, my chameleons all eat larges, so I don't think those are quite adult size. I think they're a little bit below, but like if you had a parsnip chameleon, they could take down an adult dubia, no problem. But really, like, it depends how big your chameleon is. The rule of thumb, again, is no bug bigger than the width between their eyes. So if the dubia is bigger than that, then I would say they are too big and you should go down a size. But if they fit in that space there and you think it can fit in their mouth, then go for it. I would just caution you to be more conservative. It's better to feed a couple extra smaller bugs than just like one giant big bug that may or may not be too big. Um, also, I know some like persons in particular have taken down adult roaches and their legs can sometimes have little spikies on them. So they can get like a little cut in their mouth and end up getting an infection. So I'm gonna caution you on adult roaches. Let's see. Finally caught a live stream. Hey, hey Jamie. Did I say your name right? Oh man. But yes, nice to see you. I know you're a big supporter of the channel, so I appreciate all your comments. Um, best place to shop reptile supplies. Let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Um, I would say some good places are Josh's Frogs, LLL, I think is it? Reptiles. Um, well, who else? DoobieRoaches.com. I know they have some supplies. Uh, Pangea Reptile, they have some supplies. Amazon carries reptile supplies. Yeah, also, if and when expos open up, ooh, I'm so excited. Reptile Expo is like, that's the place where I stock up on all my bugs and my supplies because they're usually super, super discounted and you don't have to pay for shipping. So, one day we will have Reptile Expos again until that day. Yeah, it, I'm excited. Do you have any bioactive enclosures, thoughts on bioactive pros and cons? Um, I do not have any bioactive chameleon enclosures. My crested gecko enclosure is bioactive. Pros and cons to bioactive. Pro is they're self-sufficient, right? You don't have to worry about like picking up poop. It's as naturalistic as it gets. Cons is that they can be a little more um, time and money and energy to try and set up beforehand. Pro is you don't have to worry as drain about drainage as much. Um, con, it's hard with like typically screen enclosures to try and have a bioactive bottom. Pro is that the bioactive enclosure could increase your humidity levels, but also a con, it could increase your humidity levels. Like I already live somewhere where I have pretty high humidity in my apartment. So that's why I don't use bioactive enclosures because it would raise my levels too high. So that's why I use, excuse me, screen enclosures and bare bottoms so that I can help control the humidity levels um, for my chameleons. Does that help? Hopefully give you some like pros and cons. Oh, what's up guys? We're up to 47. Can we get up to 50 people? We'll see. I'll probably do this for like another 20-ish minutes. So if you have any other questions, drop them down. Okay, should you feed every day? Um, as a baby, yes. As an adult, no. Baby chameleons once a day every day in the mornings is great. As an adult, I would recommend three to four bugs every two to three days. Chameleon obesity is a very real thing. People will overfeed their chameleons because they're like, oh, it's still eating, it must be hungry. Chameleons are opportunistic feeders, which means they will eat if they see it because in the wild, they're having to find food that way. So if something lands on the branch across for them, they're gonna eat it because they don't know when their next meal is coming. In captivity, 
that doesn't work because the, <laughs> we're the ones giving them their meals so we have to help regulate their food so um, babies yes every day adults every two to three days do 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 can you recommend some panther chameleon breeders okay so two that I, I know off the top of my head camouflage creations they've been doing this for a very long time they know what they're doing I highly recommend them I would purchase from them another one is frames cams chameleons um, they have a great 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 line of chameleons going right now um, surfing oak chameleons on Instagram I know they have some good ones um, yeah do do your research and be mindful of the price uh, a typical price for a panther chameleon is anywhere from three to five hundred dollars now if you're seeing chameleon panther chameleons for close to a thousand they're overpriced um, and I would not buy a chameleon a panther chameleon for that much four four to five hundred dollars would be a totally fair budget for a panther chameleon um, okay chameleon won't drink even though it's dehydrated chameleons are shy drinkers so it's very rare that they're gonna drink in front of you I would provide them with a dripper I'm going to ask you how can you tell your chameleons dehydrated um, the, the best way to tell is through their urate which is the chameleon pee if it's 50% orange or less then you have a hydrated chameleon if it's hundred percent orange or 75 percent mostly orange then you may or may not need to change your um, hydration cycle but yeah the smaller chameleon has been smaller since I got them I did separate them recently so hopefully he will catch up yeah fingers crossed Laura like just keep at it keep feeding them make sure their UVB is correct their temps are correct a healthy chameleon needs a healthy environment in order to thrive why do you never show Pluto on YouTube? So if you guys don't know, I have three chameleons and a crested gecko named Pluto. And a lot of people don't know that I have Pluto because I usually just talk about my chameleons. When I made this channel, I want to be exclusively chameleon content because I feel like there's very few people who ex like do chameleon videos. It's a lot of people who have multiple species and they happen to have a chameleon and they make a couple of chameleon videos. But I wanted a one-stop shop for chameleon keepers to feel confident and comfortable in taking care of their chameleons. There's tons of videos on crested gecko care. There's tons of, you know, community threads and articles and like crested gecko care is very well established and they're very hardy animals. Unlike chameleons where there's tons of incorrect information. So I feel like my time is better spent on chameleon content and chameleon care than it is on crested geckos and crested gecko care. So that's why Pluto isn't really featured. Um, it's not like he's not a chameleon and I'm trying to focus on chameleons. Like I love him dearly. Like he is a great addition um, to my animals. He was the second reptile I ever got. I love him because he's nocturnal. Like that's really cool. Um, he does well with handling. Um, anyway, I, I highly recommend crested geckos, but it doesn't make sense for my channel, for my content to like highlight a crested gecko when I'm focusing on chameleons. Hope that makes sense. Why does my chameleon open her mouth every time she baths? I've taken her to the vet twice and they tell me she's fine and healthy. So a chameleon will gape under a basking bulb, sometimes to thermoregulate. They're cold blooded, so they have to move in their environment to warm up and cool down. So I would double check the temperatures of your basking spot. What did you say, she, her? Yeah, so if you have a female, then you want a basking temperature of 80 degrees or less, no hotter than 80. So you may want to adjust that. How do you like dragon strand ledges? How about great stuff foam? I don't have experience with great stuff foam, but I 10 out of 10 would recommend dragon strand ledges. I just recently did a video on three high end products I would recommend for chameleon keepers, and that was actually one of them. They are a game changer. You can buy them separately to add on to your like XL Zoomed Rep Debris, and it's a great way to attach your branches, and I think more importantly, your pots, because it's really hard to get heavy pots up high in your enclosure. So definitely recommend them. Do chameleons blink? Yes. Um, <laughs> they also yawn and people find that funny. They do yawn. Should I get a baby chameleon or adult? You should get a chameleon that's three months or older. I don't know what you mean by baby. So I'm going to say three months or older would be best. The juvenile. When they're adults, is that at one year stage? Yes, about a year old would be an adult chameleon. Best information out there for sure. Thank you so much.
was the healthiest bug to feed chameleons or a couple common ones to feed every feeding? So my favorite bugs to feed are dubia roaches. If you can get your hands on crickets, crickets are a great option. Black soldier fly larvae, silkworms, and flies. So that's gonna be like wax, wax moths. Wax moths, um, blue bottle flies, black soldier flies. Like I love feeding flies to my chameleons. Those would be my recommendations. All great healthy feeders. Oh, we got Neptune climbing again. I can hear him um, climbing around. I just moved my commands enclosure from the window. He's such more happy. He loves to look outside the window. That's awesome. I love that. Fresh sunlight. Um, just be careful. What's your name? Sophia. That it doesn't get too hot in that window. Sometimes when the sun comes through, it can heat up the enclosure. So just be careful. It's not getting too hot in there just by accident. As Art says, hello. What's up? Oh, we got Neptune on the move. Can you guys see him? He's coming to say hi to you guys. He's exploring. See, he's coming down to the bottom of his enclosure. People are like, why do you have potted plants at the bottom? Isn't it bad if a chameleon goes down there? He's just exploring. It's not like he's staying at the bottom and is unable to climb up. He's just checking out the bottom. And so that's why I put plants down at the bottom of all my enclosures for my chameleons to come down to the cooler parts. And then they can go up to the warmer parts if they want. Um, let's see. Once Earl learned where the reptile chameleon drinking fountain, he is not shy in drinking. Highly recommend the fountain. So Tim, I actually don't recommend fountains or waterfalls on my channel or for keepers. Reason being is they can be very, very, very difficult to keep clean and prevent any sort of bacteria um, from going in there. It's very common for a chameleon like to poop in it or a dead bug to fall in there. And then if they drink from that, that can cause issues. Um, chameleons have very sensitive like internal whatever. So some people use it. I just say it's not worth it. The risk, much safer hydration options would be to use a mister, a dripper, or a fogger. My two cents, do what you will, just my recommendation and my experience. Um, my boys are so grateful for the info you give, happy to share. Um, Hi, my chameleon is sick. Do you know the right way to force feed her and give her water? I don't recommend force feeding or force hydrating your chameleon. If your chameleon is sick, then I what I do recommend is taking to them, taking them to an experienced exotic vet um i don't think food and water is going to help your sick chameleon it's it could be the result of improper husbandry and care so i would recommend doing some research on the correct uvb and supplementation um, you could try doing a hospital bin which is like a rubber made bucket with like a towel so that if your chameleon's falling it's safe for them but really your best option is try to take them to an exotic vet it's very tricky to try and force feed or hydrate a chameleon just because of the anatomy of their mouth and it can be more stressful than it is helpful. So good luck with your chameleon. Um, I'm sorry, there's not more I can help you. Excuse me, Neptune. You're making a bunch of ruckus. Um, I'm part of several Facebook chameleon groups and help people extensively about proper care and highly recommend you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Why don't you breed bugs? Because the adult roaches freak me out. <laughs> they, they really do. I don't want to deal with the adult dubias or superworm beetles. I'm also in a one bedroom apartment, so I don't have a lot of space to be breeding bugs. And I also have no issue paying for my bugs. If I was trying to be cost effective, breeding is the way to go. I don't mind paying the extra for someone else <laughs> to deal with that. So space, time, money, Lots of factors to consider. Um, all these chameleon questions are important, but the real question is why are sandwiches better when you cut them in half? Touche! Like a grilled cheese just isn't the same. Cut down the middle. You gotta go for the diagonals. I think so you can have like more of those corners. I don't know. Is that a thing? Is there a science? I'm sure someone's like researched it, but yes, I agree. Diagonal's the way to go. Do you have videos with info about Jackson's? So, I, like, I know I show footage of my panther chameleon, but 99.9% like .9 of my videos are applicable to Jackson's chameleons. So please take advantage, even though I don't have a video specific to Jackson's chameleons, like there's tons of great info on there for you guys. Okay, we've got about 10 more minutes before wrapping this up. Mm. Just spilt my water, excuse me. Okay, um, do you have a video on proper life plants? Lady Mizo, Mizo. Um, yes, I do. I think I have three videos now on plants. I know I talk about it in my cage build video 
at timestamp 1415. I know that because I've commented it a bunch of times for you guys. I also have a plant unboxing video which I show you a bunch of different options from Josh's Frogs. And then I have a video on how to make your plants safe for your command enclosure which I talk about different options as well. So definitely check those out. Um, for the dragon strand, do you prefer the screen bottom or the PVC sheet bottom and why is the one you chose better for you? So I actually have two options. So I, for a Luna's enclosure, I use the screen bottom and that's because she's on a drainage table. So then the water can just go straight through the bottom onto the drainage table. Neptune has the PVC bottom with three holes because of how his drainage system is set up. It actually goes through a tube. So it needs, the water needs to be able to be funneled down that and then go into the bucket. So that's why she has a screen and that's why he has a PVC. I think it really comes down to just how you have your drainage set up. Okay, at night if you have a little light on or a laptop, will it bother them? So my commands are in my living room and I watch TV at night and they have no issues with my TV light being on. The issues are when I turn an overhead light on, then that'll wake them up. So. Like a laptop light, a night light, I think all would be fine. It's like the big overhead lights that typically will disturb their sleep. What is a lane bin and where can I purchase one? Okay, so Carolina, I have a whole video lane. You can purchase one. Okay, so what is one? It's a bin that's about yay big full of washed play sand and it's somewhere for your female chameleon to go and lay her eggs. It needs to be about six inches deep worth of sand needs to be able to hold its shape. You need to wait for her to climb in there. Typically like a 10 inch bucket. Um, I got mine from Walmart, but you can get one from like Home Depot or Target or wherever, like there's tons of options. But I highly, highly, highly encourage you to watch the video. It goes through the signs of knowing when your is getting ready to lay eggs, what to do when she lays her eggs, what to do after she lays her eggs, things that you can do to help her per, like lay fewer eggs. I try to anticipate a lot of common questions, so that's a great, great resource for you, and that's just the high-level answer I can give on this <laughs> live stream. Um, <clears throat> I don't have an exotic vet in my area. What else I can do? So this is Santiago. Like, try to follow all the other instructions, right? Getting the lane bin, or not the lane bin, the hospital bin, changing your UVB, make sure your supplementation is correct, like your care has to be on point. <clears throat> I have calcium powder with and without D3. How often should I use each of them? It depends on what kind of chameleon you have. If you have a veiled or a panther, then you want to use the calcium without D3 on a daily basis and the calcium with D3 about twice a month in addition to a multivitamin. If you have a Jackson's chameleon, then you need to drop that down to one time a month for the calcium with D3 and a multivitamin. Again, I have a video all about supplementation. Check that out. Okay, guys, wrapping it up. The last few questions, um, I got my first Veil Chameleon last week. I'm so glad I started watching your videos a few months back. Any tips for newbies? So check out my video on what to expect when you first bring a chameleon home. Give them space, give them time. Make sure your, your UVB is correct. Make sure they have lots of hiding places and just keep watching my videos. There's tons of information on there. What other types of flies and moths can a Veil eat? Lastly, are hibiscus and dandelion plates, plants <laughs> safe for her to eat? Yes, those two plants are safe. Um, as far as other flies and moss, um, silk moss, hawk moss, I think are two more that I didn't mention before. But otherwise, I think that covers all the flies and moss. Can you tell me what exact cage to get? I'm about to go buy one now. So Carter, man 65 man, you want a 24 by 24 by 48 inch screen enclosure. Odds are um, you can get the ZooMed XL Reptibreeze. That's the most common one, that's the correct dimensions, and that is usually carried by like um, pet stores. If you can't find them in stores, then definitely check out places like Amazon. Um, they typically have those, have the XL Repti Breeze. <laughs> okay guys, um, when are you going to post the video for hydration? I'm hoping next Saturday. I was gonna try and get it done this weekend, but life's really crazy right now, and it's a really robust video, and I wanna do right by the video, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, for next Saturday, but that's why I'm doing this live stream instead, because I figure a live stream was better than no video, so welcome. But yes, that's my plan. Naboo says, hi, hello. Do chameleon behavior tell you if your bulbs still produce UVB or not, because mine turns darker when I turn on the light? 
You want to take him out for sun. Um, I'm going to go with no. You would know if your eczemas are showing signs of like metabolic bone disease, but that's really too late. So the general recommendation is a Repisun. UVB bulb should be replaced every six months and are in an Arcadia every 12 months. But the only way to know for certain is if you had a solar meter. Dee, dee, dee. It's almost my commands birthday. How should I celebrate? Definitely get them a hornworm. Yeah. Or they're whatever their favorite bug is. Waxworm, hornworm, silkworm, whatever. Those are all great options. Hi, Neptune. Your turn to say hi. You want to climb out? Yeah, we're almost done. I'll take you out after. You guys see him? In the corner there. Um, okay. Thanks for this. My boys will thrive. Awesome. <coughs> okay, so Sam's chameleon eats a lot but doesn't extend his tongue fully to catch the bugs. I'm trying to work out whether this is laziness or an actual problem. Chameleons aren't lazy. They really aren't. So odds are there's probably a problem with their tongue. Tongue issues are really hard to try and diagnose and troubleshoot. It could either be a, like an actual injury or it could be an issue with their supplements so but if you just got them like brand new then odds are it's as a result of how the breeder or our previous owner took care of them oh he's back on his branch okay um super great information thank you for answering all of our questions you're so welcome so grateful thank you yep 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 lol neptune on the screen okay cool well i think i got to the bottom of the chat if you guys have any last minute questions Drop them down below, quick, quick, quick. Otherwise, I'm going to sign off and I'll see you guys in the next video. So, are vets expensive for commands generally? The answer is yes, because you typically have to go to an exotic vet. Um, that's why I always say to like have a couple hundred dollars saved for the vet, because it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, and it would be really unfortunate if your chameleon needs a vet and you are unable to find one or take them to them. So I'd always try to find one before you need one and then have that money set aside just in case. So, never hurts to be overprepared. Um, yeah, anyways, I think that's it. If you guys have any other questions, um, you know, leave me a comment. My DMs are open on Instagram. You can follow me there. I am on TikTok. Um, obviously, you guys are here on YouTube. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, do you not use the drainage tray for your dragon strand enclosures? I do not. Don't like them. That's just me. <laughs> um, why are hornworms ten dollars at Petco? Because they're expensive. I don't. They're overpriced. Don't pay ten dollars. Go find cheaper ones than the ten dollar ones. Anyways, okay. Um, are too many worm? I don't. I'm sorry, Carolina. You have a typo. I don't know what kind of worms you're talking about. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your Saturday. I'll see you guys in the next video and. Have a great day. Bye guys.